Welcome to Kentish Tales and Tales of Kent, stories about the history, folklore, mythology of this great county of ours. And one place in this wonderful land has a name which sends off so many emotions. <laughs> It might make you think of that, or even better, this. You know the walls are tall and in they scream. There's no one here to smoke and save our tea. That's all life, there's a riot tonight, and that's all. I'd like to think you'd also think of... But I bet you probably had this in mind. I'm the daddy now! Britain was having a little bit of a wobble in the late 19th century that was concerned from wide sections of society that she was not what she once had been. The Boer War in South Africa had exposed frightening levels of malnutrition in vast swathes of the British public. Around 60% of recruits had to be rejected on health grounds. There were concerns about the education level of children as countries like America and Germany began to outproduce Britain in steel and other manufactured goods. There were also concerns that cities were fast becoming recruiting grounds for generations of young criminals. This explains a whole series of reforms brought in by liberal governments in the late 19th century and early 20th century, including pensions, national insurance, free school meals. In 1894, Herbert Gladstone, the son of the former Prime Minister, and who was a chip off the old block, that's a bit of a Gladstone joke for you there, was put in charge of a commission to your prisons. They were looking to create a place for young offenders aged around 16 to 21. Early experiments began at Bedford Prison in 1899. The scheme was then extended to Borstal. So here it is. I mean, I would say here it is, but obviously this isn't it. This is the village, not the prison. I asked really nicely at the press office uh, for them to let me in. They said yes, but somebody on the gate said no. Um, I can see why, it looked like some kind of deviant 1960s radical uh, planning to do no good. Um, so here we go. Uh, so just imagine, Borstal Prison was set up uh, in what had been a military prison. Uh, it was the first attempt to separate men from boys in an institution. And it was the first real attempt to cure people and set them on the right path rather than merely punish them. And so it was that a gymnasium, a gatehouse, uh, was built in the new institution. The key person at the beginning of this was an A.R. Patterson, who was on the Prison Commission Board. He said, We have learned to look on the crime, not as an unprovoked attack upon society to be punished without regard to any before or after, but as a symptom of something wrong in the lad that has to be corrected. With this in mind, Patterson created uh, prisons which were more like the private schools of the time. The institution would be split into different houses with a master in charge of each. There'd even be a matron to oversee housekeeping and give a more feminine influence. They created inter-house competitions uh, featuring things like football. They even went so far as to have a summer camp together. Patterson said of the summer camp, the fact that at the last summer camp, two out of the 280 boys escaped was noted in the press as a bad mark against Borstal. What was really worth noting was that when 280 of the 1,000 presumably worst boys in England were put upon their honour, 278 were found to respond to the appeal. Other journalists were more positive about the Borstal experience. For example, this American journalist. The Borstal boy has drill gymnasium, trade instruction, schooling, and amount of recreation, games, newspapers, magazines, football, cricket, not generally found in American reformatories. Patterson noted, however, The time is too short to allow of much being done in a way either of technical training or of general education. What is aimed at is to fit the boy for his future life by inoculating the habit of steady work. Such time as we can be found for schoolwork is devoted not to instruction on uniform lines, but to arousing 
the boy's interests by variety of subject and making him use his wits. In 1947, Patterson died and Borstals went into slow decline across the country. The problem was their success. In the 1930s, two years after anyone who had been left in Borstal prison, 70% of them had not been reconvicted. Because they'd been so successful, more and more and more uh, young criminals were sent to them. The governor of Felton Borstal outlined the problem in the 1960s. Over recent years, the type of lad allocated to here has changed radically from the fairly tough dullard who needed a modicum of medical oversight to young men with mental and or physical disorders, personal defects and considerable social inadequacies. Running throughout are very many drug addicts or dependents, not a few high intelligence ratings and a very large number of suicide risks. Also, if you were seeking to rehabilitate young criminals, this would take time and with time, money. And this was not what the government in the 1980s wanted. They wanted a short, sharp shock for young offenders. So the Criminal Justice Act of 1982 abolished Borstals. However, if you're a young man and find yourself in trouble in India, then you might find yourself attending one of their Borstals, of which there are actually 20. There are 12 in Tamil Nadu alone. Not sure why, but there you go. Look at them all. They're enjoying yoga. I know people who'd pay £400 for a whole weekend of yoga and they get it for four or five years. God, don't even know they were born. Thank you for watching uh, Kentish Tales and Tales of Kent. If you're interested, you can like and subscribe below and you'll also find a link to my website where there's a reading list uh, if you're interested in the world of Borstals.